Good evening and welcome to our Committee of Adjustment meeting. Uh, can I have a mover and a second at open meeting? Moved by Deputy Mee Lang, seconded by Councillor McDonnell. Be resolved that the Committee of Adjustment meeting of March 6, 2023 is hereby called to order at 6.31 p.m. Approval of the agenda. Are there any cha changes to the agenda? Okay, can I get a mover and a seconder for the agenda? Moved by Councillor McDonnell, seconded by Councillor Bougie. Be resolved that the agenda of the March 6, 2023 meeting be approved as presented. Are there any, or sorry, approval of minutes? Were there any notices, uh, changes to the minutes required? Great. Um, do I have a mover and a seconder uh, to accept the minutes? Moved by Councillor Bougie, seconded by Councillor McDonnell. Be it resolved that the minutes of the February 21st, 2023 meeting be approved as presented. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? All right, seeing none, we'll get into new business. A0423, uh, Brasso, Wilson Architectural Design Incorporated. Ms. Haley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So good evening, everyone. Uh, this is a hearing under Section 44 of the Ontario Planning Act. Any person may attend this hearing and or make written or verbal representation, either in support of or in opposition to the proposed minor variance. If a person, the applicant or public body does not make oral or written submissions at this hearing before the minor variance is decided upon, their comments will not be considered by the Committee of Adjustment. Only the applicant, the municipality, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, or certain public bodies may appeal the decision of the minor variance of the Committee of Adjustment to the Ontario Land Tribunal, also known as OLT, within 20 days of the decision. Note that the committee members have reviewed the application along with any written submissions received in support of or in opposition prior to this hearing, and in addition we will hear today oral submissions from any interested parties. So we have two applications uh, before us this evening. The first one is known as application A0423. It's located at part of block C, registered plan 26, being part one on 14R6058 in the geographic township of Charlottenburg, now in the township of South Glengarry, located at 1 Victoria Street, Lancaster. The subject property is 0 0.14 acres in area. This is a key map of where the property is located. Uh, this is on the very northeast end of Victoria Street. Uh, council may remember this property because this was actually um, donated originally to the Habitat for Humanity and then recently some additional land was sold to the, uh, the current owner. So the purpose of the minor variance this evening is the owner wishes to construct a secondary dwelling unit on the subject property and in order to accommodate that dwelling unit they're looking to reduce the front yard setback from six meters to three meters. So I'm going to show you several pictures to explain this a little further. This is a concept plan. This is not the final concept plan. This is not exactly uh, how it's going to uh, look. However, the applicants looking at very different variations for the addition and uh, working with our water and wastewater department, they will be required to have the homes connected for servicing purposes. So um, these were provided as conceptual. Regardless of how the look is going to be, the agent of the applicant was uh, looking to move forward with the application because they knew that they could fit the proposed addition within the requested three meter setback. So I'd like to orient everyone here a little bit. On this property, or excuse me, on this slide, you're going to see a variety of dashed lines. The very dashed line, the very bottom dashed line represents the um, south property line. And you can see on the right hand side, there's a red line and that represents where the three meter setback will be. So to that interior dashed line. So that would be the closest it will go to the abutting property to the south. We happen to own the abutting property to the south. That happens to be the property where our water tower is located on. So here's a few images of the property. Um, the property is, the house is built on an angle. So you can see here, um, the images look very similar, but they're all slightly different angles. So the proposed structure would actually be, or the addition would be located on my left-hand side of that dwelling unit. And um, the property is designated residential district in the county official plan, and it does conform to the general intent of the OP. And the property is owned residential two and conforms to the general intent of the zoning bylaw. This is a zoning map. Um, this actually is a decent representation of the property because 
the area outlined in blue shows the previous red lot line that would be through the property. That red lot line represents the previous um, uh, property line, but now that property has been enlarged, enlarged with the recent uh, acquisition of additional township owned land. The application was circulated to all abutting property owners within 60 meters, and we've not received any written or verbal comments to date. We did specifically circulate the application to our water and wastewater department and infrastructure services. It was re reviewed and they had no concerns with the structure being as close as three meters to the municipal property. And uh, that that's when they did provide us comments on how the connectivity to the municipal services would work. And we have reviewed it in terms of planning in our building departments and we support the application and recommend it to be approved. So Mr. Chair, we do have an, the agent representing the applicant online with us this evening, that would be Noah. So perhaps um, you may want to refer to, to him. Thank you. Okay, great, I'll start with uh, around the table. Uh, if there's anything or we'll go to Noah. No. Okay, we'll, we'll go to Noah. If you have anything you'd like, like to add. Um, sorry, I might have missed the discussion before that. Uh, we were just saying if there's something you'd like to add from uh, Ms. Haley's presentation. Uh, I think the audio wasn't working on it. Sorry. Yeah, we couldn't we couldn't hear it on our end. Okay, um, so I guess it's a if I can summarize fairly standard. It will be approaching onto municipal property or not onto this property, yep. we just be closer, and, and that's the uh, three meters. So we're the neighbors uh, that will be concerned. It has been circulated to the water department. Um, it, okay. was, it was the, uh, for, for Councillor Jaworski, it was the old, the one that was given through uh, Habitat uh, for Humanity. No, was that Habitat for Humanity? Yes, yep. So I guess my question might be, uh, you said one water connection is, is likely, is that a topic here, or is that something we don't talk about, discuss at this time? No, I'll gladly answer your question, Mr. Chair. So um, basically the, the original submission appeared like they were two separate dwelling units. We're only able to service the proposed unit through the existing unit. So it's not like a separate detail or a separate connection could be allocated. And um, the applicant is aware of that. The property owner is aware of that. So um, they know that they'll just have to connect the two units. Okay, with that then it would be wise to that. Let the finance department know that there, there's a water. There's yes, a, that will be they will be made aware of that. Yes, and great. And uh, in your opinion, does it does it match? Uh, like I always think urban density, right? So this kind of helps towards that having two dwellings on smaller parcel in our developed land. And it conforms to the bylaw. Yes. Okay. Did I see Councillor Jaworski's hand go up? I'm not sure. Oh, I did, but then I realized maybe it's not for committee of adjustment. I I, I was wondering why they have to be serviced through like why it can't have a separate connection? It's because right. of how the um, the forest main or the mains are located on the, the main street, on Victoria Street. Okay, it's a physical limitation issue versus mm -hmm. uh, like a yes. the policy? Lack of okay. a frontage onto the main street that would give adequate space to allow for a separate connection. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bougie. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> if this new dwelling is created, my question is in regards to access. So <clears throat> right now they'd be sharing the driveway because the road doesn't come around there. And in the future, could this ever be severed and sold? That, that, those are excellent questions. I'll explain to you why. So first of all, in regards to the access, um, the access has to be by the current driveway. There will be no additional driveway will be allocated to this property, nor is there space to add an additional driveway. The property is a really odd configuration in terms of where Victoria Street actually ends. So at the time that uh, the lot was created and, um, and donated, we dealt with a reduction in minimum public road frontage um, because of the configuration of the property. It'll never be able to be severed for that reason either um, because they can't meet the minimum frontage requirements of 15 um, meters for a single detached or if this was truly a semi, it would be nine meters per dwelling unit. In this case, what'll happen is, is basically picture a, an apartment unit or some people might call it even a granny suite. So really in addition to the dwelling that will result in, in two different units. Okay, great. Are there any questions from around the table? All right, then, Councillor Jorsky, your hand did not go up. Some, I'm sorry, I'm 
Okay, perfect. All right, then I'll be moved by Deputy Mayor Lang, seconded by Councillor Bougie that we approve this one, and we'll move on to the second application, AO523. Oh, oh sorry, yes, call a vote, thank you. All those in favor? Any of opposed? Seeing none, carried. <laughs> thank you, Councillors and Deputy Mayor. So now moving on to AO523, Ms. Haley. We'll just uh, wait for the presentation. And please, uh, Councilor Jorowski, if you can't hear us, uh, can you uh, come on our screen? Is that possible? Or? OK, perfect. Uh, Michelle can see you, so let us know if you can't hear us. OK, so we'll move on to application A0523. And this property is located at part of Lot 5, Concession 1, Indian Lands, um, in the geographic township of Charlottenburg, now in the township of South Hungary. And it's located at 18382 at County Road 2 in Glen Walter. The subject property is 0.08 0, 0 acres in area. This is a key map of where the property is located. Um, maybe to help orient uh, the committee and the public, if you go to the right of the uh, property that's blacked out in black, you'll see a larger lot on the waterfront. That's the Blue Anchor restaurant. So there are only a few properties west of the, uh, the restaurant. So the purpose of this minor variance is, is the owner is proposing to demolish and to reconstruct a single detached dwelling. Therefore, the following relief from the zoning bylaws requested. The first request is to reduce the watercourse setback from 30 meters to 6 meters from the canal to the proposed residential addition. And I'll explain what I mean by the canal in a minute because it is directly uh, fronting on St. Lawrence River. The second one would be to reduce the front yard setback from 6 meters to 0 0.6 meters. And the third one would be to reduce the west interior side yard setback from 1.2 meters to 0 0.9 meters to the proposed single detached dwelling. This is a survey of the subject property. We require the property owner to obtain a building location survey. I realize we can't see it from here, so we're gonna get into a little more details. On the drawing that was submitted um, by the uh, designer for the dwelling, the area in the medium color gray represents the footprint of the existing structure. On the bottom of the screen would be County Road 2. The top of the screen uh, would be the canal, or excuse me, would be the St. Lawrence River, I'm sorry. The two lighter areas of gray represent new construction. So I'm going to refer to the area at the top of the screen. That's actually a cantilever deck uh, above. So it's a walkout basement uh, dwelling that's proposed. They will be able to walk out flat. There'd be a roof above them and then it would be a second story deck. And you will see that it's in line with the existing structure. So they're not going any closer uh, to the water. And then, and this, this uh, design does not actually go right, right to the water's edge. It shows uh, the previous property line of the original lot. And then the area in the front along County Road 2, where it's a proposed light gray is a new section of the dwelling unit that will be a concrete uh, step. The darkest part of the gray on the property would be filling it in. So the original footprint did not have that dark area. The new print pr footprint will have that dark area and there'll be a garage located in that location, which will help them to achieve the two parking spaces. Because as we know, it's really difficult to park along County Road 2. So, these are highlighted a little bit more closely. You can see uh, the bottom circle represents um, the front yard setback that of the 0 0.6 meters. The uh, top circle shows where the existing structure was 0 0.9 meters already. So they're following that same uh, existing building line. And then in this location, you're going to see the circle that shows six meters. In the area that it's pointing to, the dashed area is actually an inlet along the St. Lawrence River. So the shoreline's actually a little deeper, but that's the closest part of the shoreline. So we'll give you a few more pictures here. It's hard in the winter time to get really great pictures to show the property, but you can see on here that the dwelling is quite small. It actually has a red shed directly in front of the dwelling. And that's not uh, part of the original footprint in those drawings that we showed you. And then um, I'm going to uh, show you the shoreline in a minute here. 
So the property is designated residential district in the county official plan, and it does conform to the official plan, uh, the proposal does. And the property is zoned residential one in floodplain holding, and it uh, does conform to the general intent of the zoning bylaw. When you look at this map, um, you can see the bottom of the property highlighted in turquoise is not a complete um, square. It comes in a little bit. That's where the canal is. So the shoreline is straight and then moves uh, up north a little bit and comes down, which is why we're recognizing the six meter setback to the closest part of the, um, the river and the canal. So the, uh, the application was circulated to all abutting property owners within 60 meters. We did not receive any comments, any phone calls, nothing uh, to date. The application was circulated to the Raisin Region Conservation Authority. But prior to receiving this application, a lot of work was done in advance in terms of pre-consultation meetings with the Conservation Authority, with the United Counties. Before we put people through a process, we want to make sure we're uh, reviewing everything very carefully to see what we can or can't support. If not, we'd be wasting everyone's time. So the Conservation Authority, uh, their comment indicated that after review of the natural hazards and the erosion access allowance and the Clean Water Act and the Conservation Authority Act, they do not object to the minor variance as presented. And that's really because what's being proposed is pretty much being proposed on the identical footprint with the exception of the few areas that I pointed out. We also uh, received comments from the uh, United Counties of sd &G Transportation Department. They've already issued a setback permit for the proposed dwelling that was done so in September of 2022. And I believe it would have gone through County Council given the uh, short distance of, um, of where the dwelling is proposed. So therefore, the proposed minor variance application is reflecting the already approved reduced setback. And they had no additional concerns regarding the application. Planning and building have reviewed the, um, the application as well, and we do recommend it to be approved. Uh, um, the for the main reason is the proposed structure is not going any closer to the water course than the existing structure. So that's all I have this evening. I did expect the applicant to come this evening, so I apologize that nobody's here representing them. If that's a concern for the committee, you do have the right to defer it. If you don't have concerns based on what you saw this evening, we can proceed with making a recommendation to either approve or refuse the application. Thank you, Ms. Haley. Are there any questions or comments from around the table? Um, I don't see Councillor Jaworski. Does she have something to say? No, okay. Um, Councillor McInnell. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, at this point, I'd move to approve as presented. Great. Moved by.